today I'm talking about. Hello. Let's take a look at part three of Overlook Deductions. If you haven't seen part one or part two, I do advise you go back and watch those videos. You might be able to find some deductions you might have overlooked. Today we're going to specifically examine your fixed assets on how you might be overlooking some deductions you could have with your fixed assets. So while you run your business, you know, you're in the habit of buying assets. You might buy a computer, you might buy an equipment, you buy something. And then you think that equipment or that computer is going to help you increase productivity one way or the other, or you buy something and then you realize, I don't really need it. I would rather just buy something else because this is more productive. Well, you accumulate these assets in your business, but the problem is they're not helping you make any revenue or increase productivity or reducing expenses. And so when they're not doing that in your business, it's almost worthless. So what do you do with this worthless asset? Well, you sell them. When you sell them, you can gain, you can claim the loss on your tax return if you sell it for less than your book value. So let's take a look at some examples. So here it is, I have a computer, I bought it for $5,000. Year to date, I only claim depreciation of $200. The book value is $4,800. Well, this computer, when I bought it, I thought that it was going to be this great computer and it was gonna do everything I thought I needed in my business, but I bought it and it was so complicated, I didn't even know how to use it. So guess what happens when I don't know how to use something? I'm, I already have more than enough to think about. I don't want to have to start learning complicated systems of stuff. So what am I going to do is stuff it to the side and buy something simple I can actually deal with. So that computer is just sitting down there. I'm so busy. I'm not even thinking about it. But once a year, I challenge you to go ahead and take a look, an inventory of all your assets and say, hey, of all these assets I have, which ones are not useful to me? So you look at the asset, you ask yourself the question, will net income fall as a result of selling this asset? And so if, if you're not using it, it's not going to affect anything in any way. So the answer to that question will be no. And then you say, okay, so maybe net income will not fall all fall, but will buying a replacement increase productivity? So maybe it's, it's, a, it's an old asset and it's like, it's a computer that's running like so slow, like it's driving you out of your mind. And just to start the computer every morning takes like two hours. And then before you get anything done, it's like 10 hours. So you also want to look at those assets. So if you were to replace it, obviously we have to increase productivity. But in this case, we're talking about an asset that we never use because it's very complicated. So in this case, well, we probably have a replacement if it's a complicated asset, so it will be no. So since the case uh, we're not we're not buying a replacement, we're not going to worry about computed IR uh, internal rate of return. The next example it will be an example where we actually have to compute that amount and then figure out if a replacement would be better. But for now, we're not talking about that. Let's just keep talking about. Let's go through the same line. Then I can probably sell this asset on eBay for four thousand. And if that's the case, hey, I can claim a loss of my book of eight hundred. Two things happen here. I got four thousand cash. I can get right back into my business, and I also have an eight hundred dollar loss. I can clean on my taxes. Good deal, huh? So if you have assets just sitting down there, not doing anything for you, think about selling it because there you go. You might get extra cash that is just sitting down the worthless. I remember things like assets. The longer you keep them, like things like computer equipment, the less value they have. So the faster you can get rid of them, the better for you. So let's look at a piece of equipment that we know we can probably increase productivity by replacing the equipment. So here's an equipment we bought for $10,000. You're taking depreciation of $2,000. So our book value is $8,000. Well, if we were to go ahead and sell this asset, our net income will fall because we actually use this asset to make revenue. It might be like maybe we're a print shop and we need the, the equipment to, you know, print screens or or we, we are a consulting business or so we need the computer to consult. So yeah, if we got rid of our computer and we're consultants, it's almost like we can't do anything. We need the computer. But however, even though net income will fall, productivity might increase by buying a replacement asset. So it might be if the computer is just so slow, it takes like 10 years to start up. Okay, that's an exaggeration. 
it takes like 30 minutes to start up and then every now and then it locks up and it freezes and every time I'm on the phone with a customer or client it's freezing up and it's just so frustrating so I just need another piece of computer it's not working for what I need it for so productivity increase so the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out what our internal rate of return is so we scroll down and we say, okay, if we were to buy new equipment, the new equipment would cost us $8,000. We can probably sell the old one for, maybe we can sell it for 1000 And we can probably get interest rate about 5%. So the amount of revenue, so let's say this is a computer and all our revenue we earn in the business comes through by working on this computer. So... Over the next five years, we're estimating our revenue will be hundred thousand. Let's just say it's hundred thousand all the way through. Multiple computers, but this computer directly is bringing in hundred thousand dollars each year. And if the case was, it was increasing productivity. So by increasing productivity, which means you can bring in more revenue. So you want to add the additional revenue you're making just by increasing productivity. Or if it's the case that's basically increasing productivity so you don't need to hire as many people then you want to enter your savings. So basically whatever you're saving and whatever this asset is doing for your business, you want to try and monetize it, which means you want to try and estimate the monetary value of this asset. And then so just based on this, we can see we have an internal rate of return of 14, 29%. So we put that in there and the suggestion is to replace the asset. So which means you are better off with this new asset because one, you're going to, your productivity is going to increase, which means your revenue is going to increase. You can sell this asset for, if you sell this asset for what we previously said down here, which was 1,000, so we'll change that to 1,000, we'll have a net loss of 7,000 and we'll have 1,000 in cash. So here's cash we wouldn't have had before that we have now. Productivity is going to increase. And we have a loss we can write up on our tax return. Hmm, win-win, right? Let us look at an example where the net present value is negative. So remember when we say it's negative, when the net present value is negative, it means we're not going to make our money back over the next five years because that's the what the template computes, just over five years. So let's say this is a negative 5 point, negative 52% internal rate of return. But yet, with this asset, we actually can, if we sell it, net income will change. It will, it will fall as a result. And if we, and buying a replacement will, could possibly increase productivity, but the one we're currently looking at is way too expensive. So when this is the case, we can choose to keep or replace. We can keep shopping for other alternatives so we find something that would be declared positive or look for lower cost of borrowing money so our cost of capital is less or we can just choose to keep it and keep working with what we have because until we find a better option in the market so in this case you know selling is not the most appropriate thing to do when you're when you're faced with the situation but if you do choose to sell i mean you need the cat maybe you need the cash in your business let's say you sell for 500 you know that's 500 cash you get and 500 loss you get to claim your taxes but when a situation is like this, like I said, you're better off holding up till you find something that will pr provide a positive return rate of return and keep what you have. And then over time, replace it because obviously the value of that asset to your business is falling. So you want to keep an, a very good eye on that. So to wrap things up, remember at least once a year, you want to take an inventory of all the assets you have see what, which ones are still providing value to your business see which ones are worthless you want to sell the ones that are worthless you get cash you can get you can claim a loss on your tax return and um so that's one deduction that's often overlooked is is deductions that are wrapped up in assets now i didn't talk about if the assets are fully depreciated or and recapturing depreciation that's that that is not that was not the topic of discussion here i mean obviously this is more complex than than what I've talked about. I mean, that's why I do recommend you talk to your CPA. But if you want a copy of this template for your own analysis, you can go ahead and download it by clicking the link below. Like what you see? Go ahead and click the subscribe button on the very bottom of this video. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.